CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, raising the bar. With our games both in Minneapolis and Washington, D.C. at halftime, welcome everyone back to our New York studios for Singular at the Half. I'm Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg and Seth Davis. A couple of things happening tonight that uh, are a little bit surprising to say the least. Let's start with our game between Boston College and Villanova. B.C. leading it 28 to 24 and uh, the Eagles have done some nice things right tonight. They certainly have. Sean Marshall came into the game having made two of ten field goals in the first two tournament games on fire early. Here he is in Side. He had a first half high 10 points, being very aggressive offensively. Nice little pull up jump shot there. And then he gets open on the good ball movement. Villanova slow rotating, knocks down one of his two triples. There's another one right there. Sean Marshall staked his team to a 16 point lead. But it's eclipsed lately. Well, I'll tell you what, Villanova has not made a three-pointer in this game. You'd think BC would like to be up by more than four points. You know, the three-point shot in Allen Ray in particular has been pretty bad. He's 0 for 5 from behind the arc. Uh, they make 39% on the season, but they have had games this year where they've had a low percentage from three-point range. It's a, a misconception uh, about them that they're so dependent on this. BC has 12 turnovers. They do it with their defense and their speed, and that's been the difference. Squeezing the orange is mandatory when you play the Wildcats because they thrive on turning turnovers into points. Pressure defense, another turnover. Dante Cunningham reaching and rising. But again, the deflections, the quickness, the activity forces no shot attempts for Boston College and that's why Villanova's only down four points right now despite 0 of 9 from three point range. And you see Alan Ray there with just three points on one of eight shooting and you talked about it uh, Seth first of all if you are if you're Villanova and if you're Jay Wright in the locker room don't you feel good about your second half chances just law of averages. Let me tell you something I talked to Tom Crean the Marquette coach this week and he said that these Villanova players never believe they're going to lose a basketball game and that is more than anything else what they bring to the table again they've had games Games this year where they haven't made three pointers and they've still won a lot. All right, in the Washington, D.C. bracket, they're also at halftime, and this has been all George Mason 35 to 19. The Patriots in the lead, and thanks to an awful lot of good shooting from behind the arc. Seven of 11 the Patriots have knocked down from back there. Lamar Butler spraying it from there. Tony Skill, that's Falaren Campbell. Falaren Campbell again. And then getting the nice shooter's roll. Butler. That's that's a sweet sound, isn't it, Greg? You did. <laughs> You're familiar that with that cord. sound clock from your playing career. I, I'm certainly unfamiliar with it. You know who else is unfamiliar with it? Wichita State. My goodness, one for 11 from behind the arc and. I don't care who you're playing. You cannot win a basketball game shooting that poorly from behind the three point line and they have really just never settled into a good shooting rhythm. I felt like they came out playing a little bit too fast and I think that George Mason to me looks like they're the home team and tonight they are. All right guys 35 19 Patriots in the lead at halftime singular at the half continues in a moment. We remind you, two more regional semifinal games still ahead this evening, including Washington against top-seeded UConn. The Huskies' Rashad Anderson could start for most schools, but he's found a niche with UConn as the best sixth man in college basketball. And now Jim Calhoun's not-so-secret weapon is hoping to help Connecticut win its second national title in the last three years. All right, guys, those of you watching the game in Minneapolis, we're going to send you back for the second half. Those of you watching in Washington, stay tuned. Singular at the Half continues after this. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, raising the bar. From the second half at this regional semifinal in Minneapolis, Boston College leading 28-24. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the Men's Basketball Championship is sponsored by Autotrader.com. AT&T. Cadillac. And by Miller. 
We are back in Minneapolis. Jim Nance, Billy Packer, Jim Spinarkel, and our Pontiac game changer. Billy, what do you have? Well, Boston College did a very nice job, particularly early in this ball game, going. In Minneapolis, the second half about to get underway. Boston College leading Villanova by four. Look ahead to the second half if you're Villanova. Well, they're right where they want to be. Disruption on defense, forced turnovers, and make a few threes. But mainly, look to penetrate off the dribble because if they do that, they'll get some good open threes and they'll knock them down. And if you're Boston College? Well, first of all, you worry about Villanova making shots because they can score points in a hurry. But now you have Craig Smith, Jared Dudley, Lewis Hitton, their three mo most important players, all have two personal fouls each. They don't want any of those guys, especially Craig Smith, getting his third foul. All right, before we send you out there for the start of the second half, let's take a look at the highlights of that game. Uh, Boston College leading Villanova 28-24. Well, early on, Pacific and a victory over Montana on its resume. Let's send you to Minneapolis. Jim Nance and Billy Packer. We could have been out of this thing, so I think with players back on the floor, Villanova may be in better shape than is Boston College because Boston College they have five guys with two fouls on them, some critical in Dudley and Smith. Boston College went the last five and a half minutes without a basket. Here's a foul as Boyd drives, and it's called on Marshall. That last five and a half minutes of the half, BC missed four shots from the field and turned it over five times. Their last made basket gave them that 25 to nine lead, and then came Villanova's big storm at the end of the half. Well, one of the things that you like about Foy, and let's say a little bit more even than Ray, and the fact that he is a shooter who is really a scorer. Ray is primarily a guy that's a shooter. So Foy, not hitting well early in the ball game, figured out ways to take the ball to the basket. That could have been Smith's third right there. Found ways to take the ball to the basket. And here you see Boston College play a little bit more of a matchup zone. And now they go back to their man-to-man. -man. This rebound by Dante Cunningham off the missed free throw. And here's Foy sliding to his right and hitting the three. And just like that, they've tied the game at 28. Terrific job. It has been all Foy. First team All-American player, Big East player of the year. Playing a smart game. So Boston College falls into a 28 all tie with Villanova. We'll keep track of that game for you. Thank you for joining us everyone on Singular at the Half. Second half in Washington after this. By Autotrader.com. AT&T. Cadillac. And by Miller. Welcome back to Washington, D.C. at the half, a 16-point George Mason lead. And uh, the big difference has come on the perimeter in three-point field goals. Let's take a look at Power Aids, Power, and the paint. Bill Raffrey. Well, we all thought the inside game would dominate, but they've done is a nice job here. But one time Thomas could get on track. They went to him, but I love manufacturing post-ups. Put it on the deck. Get yourself to the rim. Maybe an opportunity for a three-point play will avail itself and skin just decimating. Put it on the deck, getting between defenders and going strong to the 10. 35-16, George Mason, the largest. For 25 as a 26-point game. Had 24 in that game against Arizona. Four for eight threes. So when the three is not there, he figures out ways to score. That second foul on Allen Ray. Now, one more coming here for Smith. Had Boston College, let me ask you this. Boston College never goes to the ACC. Now you've got Craig Smith and Randy Foy in the league. Which one's the player of the year? <laughs> Gonna be a close one, wouldn't it? Well, I think it got, would get back to which team finished the highest. Uh-oh, there's Foy in the lane. The referees don't call it. Makes no difference. Smith makes it anyway. Well, I think the reason that BC left the Big East and went into the ACC is because in the NCAA tournament, 10 times an ACC team eliminated them. <laughs> so they figured yeah. might as well join them. They'll have to play them in the NCAA tournament. Of course, they had that one big knockout of North Carolina back in 94 when Carolina was a one seed. That's the last time they took on a one. They're taking on one tonight. Boy missing on the drive. Pulled down big time by Oates. Yeah, that, that defeat of North Carolina Stop Dean Smith incredible streak of 13 straight sweet 16s. Well, 
Well, trying to go back to the Elite Eight is Boston College. Seven minutes plus without a field goal. And you know who they lost to in the regional finals after getting there that year? Florida, a team we have coming up in the next yep. game. Lon Kruger's club made it to the Final Four in Charlotte. And that was back in 94 again down in Miami. They played that game, and it still belongs to BC. One of the things that BC has not been able to do at all in this ball game is when they penetrate, kick out for the jump shot. Marshall made a couple early in the ball game, but that was against the press. Nice. Dudley blocked. Blocked by Cunningham, and he is coming on in this tournament as Dante well. Cunningham. Great job coming from the weak side. Lowry driving, and Oates coming over, collects his third. Now there's Oates, who should have stayed on the ground and draw the charge because Lowry can figure out a way to get that shot off. Villanova Boston College, later Florida Georgetown. The two winners on this floor at the Hubert Humphrey Metrodome Sunday. Jimmy, you don't see many guys that block a Dudley shot when he gets down, or a Smith shot when they get down in low. That was a terrific job by coming in. Jay Wright's done a really great job in substitution in this game where things weren't going right early. Went big, forced to go big, and still stayed in the game. Here's Ray spinning, putting it up, too strong, and Oates. Able to hold on with the two hands. There's where I say Foy is a better scorer than is Ray. I think Ray may be a better pure shooter. Hit it, splits the defenders, puts it up. And Cunningham again comes away with it. Smith got push under the stanchion. He's got a five on four now. Should help Villanova. Lowry trying to feed corner off Dudley. Well against Arizona, Foy had the big first half and then Alvin Ray took over in the second. So that was rather incredible, wasn't it? They, they had similar numbers at each yeah, half. Yeah, both 20-point uh, halves, one in the first and one in the second. So will it occur again here tonight with Ray off the mark in the first and Foy leading the comeback for the Wildcats once 16 down. They brought Nardi back on the floor. And Smith and Dudley have both been second-half players, too, in regard to their scoring. Cunningham has just beaten Smith to the rebounds. Ted Cunningham, his confidence growing by the minute in this tournament. He had a 31-minute outing against Arizona. Most minutes of his freshman year, and he had a season-high nine rebounds. And he's been out there a good part of the way here. Three-point shot way off. This ball picked up. Smith gets the out with Hinnett. Up ahead, Dudley, and he lost control of it. Back to Villanova. Good job by Ray. Dudley picked up looking for somebody to pass to. Never had control of the ball, but I think that was a pretty good move by Boston College. Maybe to get a fast break or two going because what's happening right now, Villanova sending five guys to the boards. Well, again, you go back to the last five and a half of the first half. And the first three-plus minutes of this, BC without a field goal. That's over eight minutes. And you know what? Smith has touched it, what, once in that sequence? And it's Foy up high with it. And Marshall comes in to help out. Well, Smith had one little shot in the lane in this half and rolled off the rim. BC, that's seven misses over the course of eight minutes and six turnovers. Suddenly down inside on Nardi. Kick it out. Step up. Marshall, two-point shot. Yes. Well, he had to do that. He had to step inside because Sheridan went right out and challenged the jump shot. That's actually now all total nine minutes, 16 seconds between baskets. But just as Villanova pulls even, three unanswered for the Eagles. There's Nardi blocked from behind by Smith. See, here they start getting some numbers on the break. Dudley, second, second time he lets it slip right through his fingertips. But Boston College starting to run a little bit. Pretty good idea. Marshall out that time on the break. Boy, leading the Wildcat charges. McGinnis used to, who was a righty, as we well know. Largest lead in the ball game now, 19 points. Oh, Miller with a little roadblock moving just a little bit late. That hurts, but Thomas promises to deliver. And he looking cranny uh, makes that turn. Able to release, gets the shoulder into the defender and knocks it down. Will Thomas, the sophomore out of Baltimore, 6'7". All five of these starters averaging in double figures for this George Mason team 
that is one of the great stories of this tournament, traveling. Uh, Lewis trying to use that body to back in. It certainly is, Vern. You know, I, I'm disappointed because Wichita State is a better basketball team. I think they're very even, but nerves sometimes come into play. Even though they play the first week exceedingly well, something you start thinking the further you get. So they've got to get some composure, and it's usually the backcourt that has to dictate that. Of course, Wichita State champions in the regular season of the Missouri Valley lost in the playoff in the tournament to Bradley, a Bradley team we saw last week. Here's the jumper, still not there. One of 13 from three. There is a basket and a chance for a free throw. You know, Vern, they ran the offense again. And when you do run your offense, your big people can get on the glass. It's within the framework or the confines of the offense. And you can see both Miller and Wilson in a position to do some damage. But when you jack them quick, you end up with breaking down the sets. Jai Lewis heads to the bench. He's just picked up his third foul. And Paul Miller will go to the boards. Gabe Norwood is on. And Sammy Hernandez, number 50, has also come on the floor for the Patriots. Miller can't find uh, the free throw. And again, that ability to squeeze. The, you know, that could be an offensive rebound, but they take care of details. Look at the disparity in free throws. Here's just a little footnote. In two and a half games now for George Mason, They've been to the free throw line 49 times. Here's the jumper. No, their opponents, including this game, have taken only 15 free throws. Well, they, they really don't foul. I mean, a lot of coaches work on that. I, I heard the practice two days ago, Jim Laranega saying, that's a foul. And, and that's, kids understand that. Nice penetration here, and they get another good look. And the tip, it just will not go. Looks like volleyball. And that's great effort, too. Miller. Sean O'Geary, number 33. Well, they close out. You got to play O'Geary on the catch, and they sure are with Norwood. Offensive rebounds, 11 to 1. Here's Wilson for three. At last. Out of Illinois, huh? one year, played the NCAA. He's been through this before. And when he can spread it, and now you can do some damage with guards putting it on the deck and slipping Miller into the post. Kyle Wilson played his high school ball at Dallas Jesuit High School. He was an all TCIL selectee in his uh, high school senior season. Mm -hmm. And then one year at Illinois before transferring. Here's Will Thomas, guarded by Miller. Rebound Wilson. Puts it in the hands of Bradley, now Kuznard. Under 15 to go in the ballgame. Sean O'Geary. Pretty. Wilson goes baseline. Rebound. Lamar Butler. Well, you can really see where Mark Turge has done a great job collecting their minds. And even though they're missing shots, oh, goodness, out that far. Small change. Put the money on the deck on that one. How about this? A little nylon from deep, stretching it for Wichita State. Greg Gumbel in New York to update you on the game in Washington, D.C., where George Mason continues to roll. They lead it 39-25. Will Thomas with the nice points in the paint right there. They led by 16 at halftime. They lead 39-25. Now we'll keep you updated. Back to Minneapolis. Jim, they can go with the three guards and the two bigs. Matches up perfectly with Boston College. So not uh, the way that Villanova has played all year when they employed the four guards, but Nardi. Not having a good NCAA tournament, they go with Cunningham, who's played very well, particularly rebounding. Ray with some nifty dribbling, working on Dudley, and he lost it going in. Again, here comes Boston College, looking to run a little bit more. I think there's a good strategy by Al Skinner. Dudley finally catches one, right? Yeah, I thought he might lose that one, too, for a minute. And there's Cunningham again, another good defensive play, because Smith was wide open if he'd have got that pass to him. So much experience on the floor for both sides. But when you're talking about Boston College, the five starters almost 500 career college games. Here they are, and there's Smith set up perfectly, and the layup finally drops. Jim, what Smith does better than any of the big guys that have been premier big guys in the country this year, he sits down, so he stays so low to the floor. 
Those bounce passes that get into him are thrown about ankle high, but he's down so low that he can pick them off and then explode to the basket. Sheridan open on Oates. Boy, he'll take the jumper. Oh boy, he is so pure, isn't he? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Just and, and he makes great decisions there. He saw the double team coming from Smith. He didn't want to go against him. He made basket, an opportunity to press, but not full court. He has all six of this half for the Wildcats. Great place to double team. And it still belongs to BC. Bring it in Clark. And Ray sitting down. And you notice that they go. Jay Wright has decided to go big whenever he substitutes instead of getting back to his small lineup. Early in the ball game, he realized he's probably going to have to play Boston College's game. We bring it in Frazier on the next whistle. And that pass, and that's the third turnover of this half by Dudley. Yeah, Dudley has been a no factor, and we're talking about a guy that has played great basketball in this NCAA tournament. Go to mycookrewards.com slash NCAA to play Coca-Cola NCAA championship run 2006. Well, I mentioned last year when these two teams played, Villanova was the one that turned it over almost twice as much as they've had assists. In this ball game, it's been just the opposite. Boston College, which normally takes great control of the ball, really throwing it away a lot. And you talked a couple of times about Dudley's 36-point performance. There's Boy, and it rolls in off the rim. He had uh, that 36-point performance to Dudley in one game against Nova last year. This one, one for five from the field and six turnovers. Here he is bringing it into the front court. Well, Boston College, Jim, to give you an example, the last two games only turned the ball over 16 times in both games. Marshall got stuck underneath. Put back Oates. Got the first two for Oates in this ball game. Just inside to occupy some minutes, make sure they don't get any further foul trouble. Keep things clean down inside for Smith. Foy is taking advantage of everything. It's a little bit too quick for Marshall. Here's Lowry. Quick move, and Smith rejects. Interesting about Smith. When you talk about what a great player he is, last year he only had 13 shot blocks on the whole year. Shows you how he's a position defender, not a guy that goes off his feet very often. You know, I look at Smith and I think of one thing. UCLA. It's where he wanted to go. His mother working for the school, actually for the UCLA Medical Center, but not really recruited by the Bruins. Broke his heart. He also would have played for USC. And they didn't show a whole lot of interest either. But he's come east and he's had some career. Oh, Lowry got fouled by Smith. No call. Yeah, he got shoved to the floor and out with it comes Boston College. Here's Dudley firing the three, knocking it down. And uh, Al Skinner says, finally, my star comes alive. And I, I really believe that pushing this ball up the floor has been an excellent move by Boston College. Now the last 14 points by Villanova have all come from Foy. And Lowry should have broken that string, but he misses the short one. The arrow is going to Boston College. Here's the inside play of Smith. Wide body gets excellent position. He's so strong. And there you see him sitting down and then exploding to the basket. Very difficult, particularly when Frazier's matched up with him, to get down that low. Right, now you've got... Villanova's got Frazier back on Smith. Look at Smith holding off with just one arm. He's so strong. Here's Marshall. Hot at the start of this game. Back of the rim this time. Long board out to Craig Smith. Now how often does he get a rebound without having to jump 20 feet? From the yeah, 20 <laughs> feet away. He's got 10 rebounds on the game and tried to get the assist inside, but Foy read it all the way. Yes, he did. He telegraphed that. Foy. Look at that. Smith almost went to the floor with that fake. First, it's Sheridan with the shot. Frazier pulls it down. And the foul against Williams of Boston College. Dudley hits the big trifecta in the lead six, BC. Wichita State last in the Sweet 16 in 1981. There's a jumper, not there. 
And they've not been in the tournament since Ooh, 88. Here is the dish. Campbell! Wow! What he, a, he's not chunky, Vern, but he can get up and down. What a nice looking dish. Campbell has 13 and a foul on Campbell. Well, they come back at you, and if you backpedal and don't sprint, this team can be explosive, and Vollerin taking it strong. And this team just comes at you in waves. That was a three-on-one break to a, against a very sound defensive team. George Mason by 16. That equals the margin by which they led at halftime. Nick Rogers is on the floor now, number zero for Wichita State. So it's Rogers. Breyer back on the floor with three fouls. Karen Bradley. Paul Miller is back, and so is Ryan Martin. Mark Turgeon's team trailing by 16. And you can notice the ball reversal. Two point guards on the floor. And Mark did not like the speed to recover. Not a good look. They stay off and stay in front of Miller. With NCAA March Madness on demand, you can watch live tournament games from outside of your viewing area on your computer for free. Sign up now at NCAAsports.com slash MMOD. Sammy Hernandez, nice uh, hand as he goes to the bench. Now Tony Skin back on the floor, number one. Here's the jumper, Bradley, in and out. Well, they gave it to him, though. Not a bad look. Will Thomas with the rebound. And look who's back, Lewis. See if they bang it inside, take advantage of him when he's in there. Well, you need a lot of quarters to get around Lewis, huh? Yes. That's a heavy toll. <laughs> Will Thomas, a little bumping with Paul Miller. Now he fronts him. Tony Skin just about lost it underneath, off the glass, oh. in and out. Thomas again. Oh, he got over the top, huh? Good effort. They got him for reaching. 43-27, second foul on Thomas. Greg Gumbel in New York to update you on what's happening in Washington, D.C. It's all George Mason, Wichita State. Ice cold, 27% from the field. George Mason getting the high percentage shots like Blair and Campbell there. They lead it 43-27, back to Minneapolis. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the Men's Basketball Championship is sponsored by Papa John's Pizza and by Lexus. Jim Nance, Billy Packer, Jim Spinarkle. And Boston College saw Villanova pull even with them at 28. But now a 10-4 stretch for the Eagles. Jim, when you see the three-point shooting from Villanova and you see the field goal shooting percentage, but you look up the scoreboard, just down six. That was close to backcourt. It was. Frazier, I think, had himself back there, though. Didn't take the ball with him. Defense pretty well spread out. Sheridan getting position on Williams down inside, not getting the touch, though. Here's Clark. And the freshman lost it in it. Tips it over to Marshall. They got a five on four. Frazier not down court. Somebody's open. Dudley was trying to hide out in that far corner, but Villanova now reset on defense. Well, you get Foy down inside on Smith. Smith wants the lob right here. Foy's just holding and this is terrific inside. There it is. Over the top, and that's on Foy. That as was, you saw it, Billy. That was great recognition by Boston College and the fact that they had the bad mismatch inside. Foy did everything he could to hang on to Smith. And many times teams just aren't that patient. But with this experienced lineup, Jim, they really were patient until they got exactly what they wanted. This is second on Foy. And Cunningham comes in for Frazier. Seems like whenever Boston College gets in trouble, they lob over the top of smaller people. Smith with Cunningham on his back. The better double team down in there because Smith loves that spot. Uh, he took advantage yeah. of it. Foy waited too long to go down and double team Smith. And there again is that patience that he has in the low post. Well, he's got another double double. Now the 44th double double of his career. 10 points, 10 rebounds. 
And that 10th point, Jim, moves him ahead of Dana Barros, right. the number two scorer all time at Boston College. And drive it in, Foy draws the foul. And that, and who is it going to be on? It's Dudley. It is. It's his third. Now he's turning around saying, well, that's on me? Then, well, well Hennett's he trying to get the foul on him. Yep, and the official doing a nice job here, waving them away. Say, son, that's the way I called it. Foy again keeping his team single-handedly in this ball. It really game. is, Billy. I mean, it really is a one-man show at the moment. He is still responsible for the last 14 points by the Wildcats going back to the first half, make it 15 straight for Villanova. Well, and he's doing it. Uh, it's amazing. He came in the in these first two NCAA tournament games, 41 points, 15 rebounds, seven assists, five steals, and tonight. He is just uh, doing the job for his team all by himself, keeping them in the game. We've got to get Alan Ray going. And it's been a struggle for Allen to this point. One basket, that's all. One of nine from the field. And Ray's on Dudley. So there's always going to be a mismatch here. Marshall moving in, good dumping hands. it in. Villanova. Jim, there is a factor. Williams is a factor that can change things for Boston College in a ball game like this. Not only is a shot blocker, but that was a great catch. Let's take a look at Power Aids, power in the paint. Here it is. So Sean Williams, sophomore from Texas, Arlington, Houston. Moved around a little bit, but all the way to Boston College, and what a presence he is in there, especially on that defensive end with blocks, but gets the three-point play. And this is the biggest second-half lead for BC. This is really a critical possession right here. Lowry would like to drive inside, and I think it'd be smart to get Lowry inside to kick out to Ray. Ray, jumper, back of the rim. Dudley tips. Sheridan comes down with it. Ray needs one to go, and it's down and out. Oh, what a rebound by Smith that time. Ray just needs to keep shooting, Jim. Get in some kind of rhythm. And there is a screen, and then Lowry tries to trip Smith. Lowry was decked. Well, it was a legal screen, though. Here's Lowry going to come over. Yeah, he just never quits. I'll show you how it works, he says. And Foy shaking off one defender. Ray, one more time. Yep. He called for it. Yep. That's the thing great shooters do. Just keep putting the ball up. He'll eventually get into a rhythm. His first three of the night. And credit that basket to Lowry. Lowry got decked at center court. Still stuck his nose and went right back inside. Stole that ball. Well, that was huge. Smith was positioned maybe to put him up double digits. And instead... Nova able to hit a three at the other end. And that's going to be a block foul called on Lowry. Watch him hit the deck right here. Well, see, this is Smith setting the screen. That is a legal screen. And then you see Lowry trying to trip him. <laughs> he backs down to no one. Frazier in, Ray out for a breather. If you set your position and you give that man that's guarding, and there's Lowry trying to pick up another foul right there. You give him room to get around you, and he doesn't. No problem. There's that interior bounce passing that Boston College does so well. Go right back in the Smith. Working on Frazier. Puts up the soft hook. Yeah, that was a tough shot. Frazier did a good job defensively there. How about Cunningham's play a couple of times here tonight? Well, you mentioned the nine rebounds he had in the last game were huge. He got seven in this one. And he never occupies the ball so that he keeps the ball in the hands of the guards. Here's Lowry on a kick out. Lowry up and in. He gets down inside. He's not afraid to put the ball up inside or drive it in there and then spin and kick it back out to one of those shooters. And now that Ray looks like he's got a little bit of stroke going, they took Ray out of the ball game, going big defensively. 
Gonna be bringing back in Sheridan on the next whistle and a foul before the shot. That one's on Cunningham. And that's his third. Williams with a three-point play for the Eagles to help them to that four-point lead. Greg Gumbel in New York once again. George Mason, Wichita State, and a timeout gives us a chance to take you to Minneapolis where Boston College continues to lead Villanova. Once again, Jim Nance, Billy Packer. One defender, Ray, one more time. Yep, he called for it. Yep, that's the thing great shooters do. Just keep putting the ball up. About set to go back to play. And the same look, Vern. Lamar Butler for George Mason. Out of the timeout now. It's Mason, Skin. Uh, they have Skin. Gabe Norwood, number five. Jai Lewis. Here's Lamar Lewis. Here's Lamar Butler. High screen set by Will Thomas, who's back on the floor. The switch. Butler. Inside. Jai Lewis. Oh, he lost control of the ball. Hey, way up. You know, he lost his balance with his feet first. A nice little bump or shug, and then a release. And a chance for Wichita State now to take. Another step toward climbing back the hill, up the hill. And they might as well use Miller if he's in the game, too. And he's a pretty good offensive guy. He screens and gets free. Here's the high five. Let's see if they get him involved as he shapes up. No basket. Rebound Lewis. Here's Butler. No numbers. Let's see what he's got in mind. Oh, tough Ooh. shot, and he gets it. How about that? Great confidence. The baby hook. Boy, he is sky high from the beginning with the smile in warm-ups and it continues very impressive lamar butler has now gotten 10 points 9 35 to go miller yes that is the guy you got to give him an opportunity to succeed miller has 10. 9 24 to go gabe norwood almost threw it away he did throw it away butler how about this, Fern? The confidence to take it, and without the backboard, able to knock it down. And here you step out. Big guys are uncomfortable defensively going out and challenge them as Wilson comes back in. They now have that inside-out game. Martin takes a blow. Martin out. Kyle Wilson in. 45-33 with 9.18 to go. A spot in the Elite Eight on the line. Here's Kuznar. Kuznar. Kyle Wilson. And he's like a touch right, right out of the gate. You want to warm up just a little bit before you look for that open jumper. Under nine to go. Here's Kuznard, double team. A better pass. He may have had it. Ooh, the oh, offensive oh, foul. Offense. Yep. And that's just a case of a smaller guy, a nudge in that case, and you don't have your balance, basically, and you can relate to that working with me. <laughs> See Kyle Wilson say that was a flop. Yeah, well, you know, he stuck the arm out, but uh, I just don't think the little guy got up and under what he was unaccustomed to having somebody that size guarding him. Now George Mason, they were so proficient beyond the arc in the first half, 7 of 11 to uh, help themselves to that 16-point halftime lead. 0 for 3 in this half. Mm -hmm. Now Bradley's on, Breyer is out. They're rotating the point position. I think yeah. they've been guarded better on the perimeter run. That's part of the not making the threes or getting them. Here's Jai Lewis, Wilson defensively. And there's that yo-yo. He goes in and pins his guy. And they use Thomas out high. And here they exchange again. Tony Skin, number one. Can't get rid of it. Seven turnovers now for George Mason. Kevin Bradley, nice penetration, gets it in the hands of O'Geary, who is fouled. He'll go to the free throw line and shoot to the foul on Tony Skin. A pretty good opportunity. 45-33, George Mason hitting 45%. Wichita State still below 30. And look at the three-point field goal difference. It's amazing. We talked about their ability to make those threes, too. I mean, this is a team 37% for the year. That's very good. Sean O'Geary, excellent free throw shooter, 85%. Sophomore from Denver East High School. 
And Paul Miller's going to get a rest. Ryan Martin is back in. And Jordan Carter is on now, number two, for George Mason. And Tony Skin will uh, get a blow. Now here's a guy that keeps active. We mentioned his three-point range as well. 23 points versus Seton Hall, too, Vern. Uh, they need somebody to step up now. This is as close as it has been since it was 24 to 15. That was a nine-point difference. Campbell off the glass. No! Oh, that's terrific. What a great look. And unable to finish around the rim, Thomas. Wichita State fans stand collectively behind the bench. They have a chance to get as close as they have been since it was 9-0. And Bernay have run their offense since halftime. Uh, Mark did a great job collecting their thoughts, getting them organized, and making them do it. 7-40, jumper Bradley. Nope. Rebound offense. And look who's there. Pretty good offensive rebound to Ryan Martin. Time call. About the road to the Final Four in the Philadelphia Daily News, and I've been reading them, and they tell me he writes it all, and it is some really well-written yeah, you material. Read, you, you read about him, and it's amazing. He uh, plays the saxophone. He's been a poet. A class president. Class yeah. Two-time Delaware Prep Player of the Year. Bad Marshall idea. Lowry with Bad the hand. idea, trying to take that ball against Lowry. And here's Ray. Passes up the three. How about that? Well, he didn't have the ball in his hands. Yeah, that was probably a pretty good idea not to put it up. You know, he, he knew he was going to shoot, took his eye off the catch. The ball wasn't seated in his hands well. Lowry right now is, is getting into his game. Penetration, kick out, and defense. Yeah, take that ball inside. Look at he's got he the goes. match with Williams. Looking for someone open. It's Ray. And outside, Marshall's going to be whistled for that one. Lowry's, hand check. Lowry's starting to take this ball game over right now in a way that Jay Wright has to love because it allows Foy and Ray to stay out on the wings and not be primary ball handlers. Wait for the kick out. Still just six team fouls, one away from the one and one. And of course, he always does it on the defensive end. You wonder what Marshall was thinking of, thinking he's going to dribble that ball all the way down the court without Lowry coming from behind him. Oh, this is going the other way. Foul inside on Frazier. The illegal screen. That could have been Smith's fourth. That's the third on Frazier. And that's six on the Villanova side. Each team with 16 fouls. Here's the Boston College bringing the ball up the court with their two forwards. They've got five players <laughs> with three fouls. They send the guards long. The two forwards bring the ball up the floor. Coaching five minutes, still belongs to Boston College. Ten on the shot clock. Clark replaces Alan Ray. Well, what's happening right now, Jay Rice taking advantage every single time of substituting quickly offense to defense. You notice, you see Ray won't even go sit on the bench. He's going to get right ready to go back in. Marshall comes around off the screen, dumps to Smith, slips through his hands. Williams, bad shot, but a whistle, and we've got bodies tangled. And Sheridan was stepped on. Who is the foul going to be on, however? It's going to be on Villanova. It's going to be on Nova. And Sunday night, 60 minutes, Tiger Woods. Saw Ed Bradley today on the CBS Early Show. For nine years, he's been trying to garner this interview. He got it. And you'll see Tiger like you've never seen him before Sunday on 60 minutes. That was the fourth foul on Frazier. And Jim, in regard to Tiger Woods, we all have to wish his father the very best. Absolutely. Uh, you know, they've had an incredible relationship that we've all enjoyed watching over the years. I know you've covered him so much. Tiger, uh, remember when he's out at Stanford practicing for the, the Masters putting on the Stanford basketball. On the Maples remember Pavilion that? hardwood. Yep. Yep. Great uh, young individual. And quite, quite a golfer, obviously. That should be very interesting. It's Sunday night on 60 minutes. Five minutes left. Five minutes. That's it. With five points, the difference. I think what we're going to see the rest of the way is this young man right here, Lowry, making things happen. An offense all his own. 
Don't forget about Foy as he drives. Nice push by Sheridan to clear a little space. That's off Boston College. Right now, Boston College could get themselves some easy fast break layups because what's happening here is Foy's driving to the basket. There is nobody back on defense. Allen Ray, three pointer. He, yes. loves that. he loves that shot. He is starting to get it going now. He's hit his last two from over there. And that shot brings it down to two. That's it. And it's Ray down there. Now he gives it up. Smith, Sheridan on Smith. Smith would love to get Dudley inside. And great job! Lowry with the steal. Is he unbelievable? The foul outside on Smith will be his fourth. And how about what he does to Williams? He takes it, takes his arm and puts it right through Williams' chest after he knows the foul's been called. He backs down to no one. He has been the man in this game. But look at this moment with four fouls on Smith. This is huge right here, and, and Lowry has been the man of the hour right here. He's creating an offense with his defense and with his penetration. Clark coming in. Ray again. This is that offense, defense, defense, offense switch, and it's a one and one. Lowry with the chance to tie the game at the line. Now, Lowry on the year, Jim, has only taken 16 three-point shots. Now, if you're looking at those stats and you say, how can a guy playing in a four-guard offense only take 16 threes? The reason for it is he drives to the yep. basket. They made he, half of them. Yeah, he created <laughs> right. And short on the tying attempt. Lowry with five steals. Now, really, if you're the key, even if Smith touched the ball, they should really surround him with people to see if they can pick up the foul on either end of the floor and get the big guy out of there. Sheridan's on him down there. Dudley takes the jumper. Out there. Rebound, Villanova. Looking for the lead. But never led in this game. Boy, and rattles out. Skying for the rebound is Williams. Williams got that rebound. You saw Lowry come from backside, almost steal it again. That was a good look for Villanova. That was their first chance to lead in this game. You know, I, I think guys that have Lowry guarding him, when he puts his hand on him, they should smack it away. He gets much, much too hand check. You see that? Here's Smith with Sheridan guarding him. He blows by him off the glass. No. Williams, nice job. Puts it up and one. A nice. chance for a second three-point play of the half. I told you this big guy can be a difference maker throughout this tournament. Sean Williams picks up the loose change. He'll be going to the line when we come back. Duke lost last night, second straight Sweet 16 loss. Memphis in the Elite Eight for the first time since 1992. What a season they have had. And LSU, fourth straight year, an SEC team has been in the Elite Eight and didn't they play well last night. And we saw them without Thomas uh, during the SEC tournament. They looked good. With him, they looked magnificent. They try to lob it in, and it's touched last by George Mason's Jordan, Jordan Carter. 6-13 to go. This uh, amazing season for George Mason. Incredible. And even that little bit of coaching, the little trap at half court causes the use of another timeout. Wichita State's down to two. Jumper, O'Geary. Wow, nine seconds on the shot clock, too. Yes. They're better when they kick it out from the box for the three. Although he likes to bounce to it. Three-point inefficiency continues to haunt Wichita State. There's a turnover as Fowler and Campbell palmed the ball. But the Shockers, Bill, two of 20. That's a Shocker. Yes. And a team that shoots reasonably well. We mentioned 37 percent, and I just think it's the speed of the three and where it's coming from. Kuznard, Wilson off the mark, in and out. Miller can't control it. Will Thomas has it. Oh, oh my wow. goodness! Matt Breyer with the giveaway, and that's his fourth foul. Whew. Just a little late in the coverage and. Uh, you know, one of those that's a little strong. Fortunately, these guys are in great shape, but uh, Matt out, you mentioned his dad, a coach. This is one tough kid, by the way, Vern. Concussions, thigh injuries. I mean, he's mono and able to play. 
And he's a pretty darn good basketball player. And like his teammates, they're not playing up to their norm. Cameron Bradley back on the floor, and Ryan Martin is as well as Kyle Wilson takes a seat. 5.33 to go. Lamar Butler. Jai Lewis. Nope. Ryan Martin with the rebound. Yeah, they stayed right on him, took his legs away. Karen Bradley, P.J. Kuznard, we're nearing the five-minute mark in a 15-point margin. Nice entry pass, and Martin draws the foul from Carter. He'll go to the line where he just missed two that would have gotten Wichita State within eight points. He might be hurt, too, Vern. And that might not be a bad idea with him hurt. And the free throw percentage to have him come over and just have the trainer look and pick a better free throw shooter. <laughs> not that there's larceny in coaches' hearts. But it's legal. Yeah, it is. You bet. It's with the rules. Ryan Martin out of Kansas City, Missouri. And you got Wilson over there, right? Put him right out there. Yeah. Well, Mark Turgeon's not going to make that move. So Ryan Martin, who just missed two, is at the line again, 53% over the course of the season. There you go. Not a bad stroke. Coach, what are you thinking about? Putting somebody else in for me. That's what Mark Turgeon is saying right now. <laughs> uh, he's just hoping uh, that these guys can play solid on the other end. But this is the, 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 the offense has been the dilemma. Make those and you can switch to D, and they do. Little pressure now. Carter will inbound. He gets it in the hands of Fuller and Campbell. Campbell from behind, and Campbell with the dish and off the glass. Oh boy, he was so close to losing it either with the dribble or the charge but under control in a nice little sleight of hand. On a giveaway. Bradley. O'Geary finds Martin. Nice strong move and a foul underneath. I think of it to Lewis. He was in the action down there. And that would be four, Vern. Uh, the big fellow with the wide body. Jim Laranek is going to go to his bench right away and get Lewis out. Norwood and Tony Skin will come back on, and Martin is back at the free throw line. And, you know, he can play smaller, too. Uh, Norwood, as noted earlier, extremely quick to the rim. Uh, can play up front just a little bit. That uh, is also the 10th team foul on George Mason. So for the next 4.53, Wichita State in the double bonus. Lewis sits. Martin shoots another. Dave Norwood will inbound. Martin pressuring the ball. And they got a hold? Wow. From half court. Sure was. Yeah. Good on, eyesight. On the cut. Very Perone on top of it. Foul was called on Kuznar. And uh, bonus now as Fowler and Campbell will go to the line, number 42. Fowler and it's spelled F-O-L-A-R. I-N. It's a Nigerian word. Mm -hmm. It means walk with glory. Nice thought. He gets one, shoots one more. 453. Remaining in regulation. Well, moving him to the point, as we noted, has just changed this team's outlook. He sacrificed a lot. Occasionally he'll score when they need him. He gets 10 points a game. And they do spread the wealth, and his unself. Here's the trap again. Somebody's got a post. Nice. Now turn, and you had a fast break. You had three on two. Depends who the guy is, though. Maybe one's yep. not the guy to dribble at and make the uh, decision. High screen set by Miller. Into a stagger. O'Geary oh. still can't get one from beyond the arc. And that's out of bounds. It will be Wichita State ball. Well, that was just well designed and executed. You just can't put the icing on it. That's been Mark's dilemma. That's almost cruel to point this out, it seems, but Wichita State, 2 of 22. That's not like you at all. <laughs> it's not your nature. Uh, just a soft-sided Scandinavian. <laughs> nice cross and pass, huh? Miller for two. Terrific job. And there. a foul. Wow, Excuse me, huh? Wow is right. Boy, that was late on Norwood. Well, get into the middle of things, and boy, you can make a lot of good things happen. The sleight of hand, Miller able to finish, and after, huh? It was called on Campbell, and it's his fourth. Boy, that changes things for them as well. Yes. Well, Larinaga is getting ready. To
to send Jordan Carter back on the floor. Matt Breyer comes back. He plays with four. Lewis is on the bench with four, and following Campbell is going to the bench with his fourth. 13-point game. And Miller gets a blow, too. A uh, good time to do it. Spot him. Then you get the timeout, uh, the electronic timeout, the media timeout. There's the trap. Breyer goes for the steal. Here's Norwood. Dishes back outside, and they will bring it back outside. Butler. Skin. Four minutes to play. He's so quick, Butler couldn't get in position to screen for him. Tony Skin. Oh, there's the fifth foul. Oh, goodness. you got to move the legs and be in a stance. Matt Breyer has just fouled out for Wichita State. Villanova has the lead and possession. With 138 remaining. They're on a 15 to 5 run right now, Billy, at a mount. And his second comeback in this game. And Jimmy, you've got to love their chances right now because now the game shifts to a guard game. And with Lowry out there on the floor with Ray and Foy, you got to figure the ball in Lowry's hands. You got Ray, I think, back into a little bit of a rhythm. You got Sheridan and Cunningham. Cunningham has done a terrific job off the bench in regard to rebounding and solid defense. Foy has been able to go ahead and take Marshall on the drive. And they are spreading it out. Jay Ray looking very calm over there, isn't he, with his ball club? Of course, they only lost to teams that have been ranked all year. Ray puts it up. Oh, lost by Williams. And he fights for it with Sheridan. Oh, they call a travel. I can't believe that call. He was pulled to the floor. Al Skinner is right. Al Skinner still fuming about the no call at the other end earlier. The two bad calls. What this a is block. a great block by Williams. He gets the ball. Now watch. He's going to be pulled to the floor here. And they call that a walk. He so, never did actually go to the ground with the ball. That is hard to believe. Goes down as the 21st turnover of the night. Well, two calls going against BC. And, of course, off the clock. A lot of time here, which really helps a team that's guard-oriented. Lowry content just to well see they they don't have to worry because they can penetrate when you got three guards like this it can be in the hands of any one of the three as the clock's going down well six second shot clock boy working on Dudley puts up the shot oh, oh, what a oh, roll. Glass and in. what a roll but what a blessing that Jay Wright has he's got three guards all of which can take you one on one in that kind of situation big advantage Villanova Boy with 24 on the night. Timeout, Boston College. We are back, and Boston College with possession down three. Now, they, of course, were so close to getting knocked out in the opening round to Pacific, and throughout that two overtime battle, Hinnant. Their point guard and senior co-captain kept telling his teammates, I'm not going home. Jim, what happens right here? Al Skinner calls a timeout. He wants a little bit more rest. It didn't feel in that short timeout he could get the message across, so he calls another. So back-to-back -back timeouts. We'll join them back in a moment to Minneapolis. Burns a couple of timeouts, still with two in the pocket, though. And what will they do, Billy? Will they go for the two or look for a three at this point? Well, what's so difficult is the fact that you got to be thinking three, and I'll tell you why. And, and it maybe not the traditional thing to do. I'm surprised Rice didn't come all in the ball game, although he played very shaky in the first half. And the reason I say that is Villanova, with the three guards, are so difficult to take the ball away from on the other end of the floor. Inbounds, tough to get in, but Smith able to bring it in. Well, Smith, here's Hennett to tie the game. Oh. And rebound on the floor. Williams battling with Cunningham. And it's going to be Boston College ball on the arrow. That's good hustle by Williams and Cunningham. Cunningham